my name is Sarah and today we're going to be talking about osteomancy, which is also known as bone casting or throwing bones for divination. Bone divination has been going on for thousands of years. Um, throwing bones could predate the Ice Age and the last Ice Age was about, you know, 11,500 years ago. So it's been going on for quite some time. So the act of throwing bones or casting bones originated in South Africa, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So I love all forms of divination. I find the practice really interesting, and somehow I stumbled across this little gem. Um, it is Crohn's Bones. I found it on um, Etsy, and this was my introduction into casting bones or throwing bones. They are um, little bones that have yes or no, um, and they use runes to actually spell out yes or no. Of course, it was quite easy to figure out what's what because, you know, yes has three letters and no only has two. So even if you don't know how to read runes for letters, it's pretty easy to figure out. It also comes with this little instructional um, piece of paper, which outlines how to use them which is you know it's helpful so the basic way to use these bones is if you get three yeses upright it's a solid yes if you get two yeses and a no it's a maybe that leans towards yes if you get two no's and one yes it's a no you know more likely a no so it's pretty easy to figure out and it's actually pretty fun to use so that would be a no, maybe yes. So why choose bone casting over other forms of divination? I personally like the tactile experience. You know, physically holding the bones in your hands and tossing them gives a feeling of connectiveness to spirit. So after I enjoyed my Crohn's bones so much, I wanted to find more bones just like it so I could make my own set and it took me a while to figure out what these bones were and I figured out that they were toe bones. Um, you can find them on Etsy toe bones and these I believe are deer toe bones. So if you want to build a, a set you could use traditional chicken bones or do what I did and get a handful of toe bones. The next thing I did was to decide what meanings I'm going to assign each bone. So I figured out that I was going to use a base of Lenormand. So Lenormand is um, a cardamancy and I just basically transferred it over to bones. I didn't use all 36 symbols in Lenormand, but I did select the key ones that I thought would suit best. And I tried to do it in a way where it was, you know, one or the other. So if there was a positive, I put a negative on the other side. By choosing a base of Lenormand, I'm able to get, you know, a pretty clear picture or snapshot of what is going on in that situation in regards to the question. I did add some other symbols as in yes or no to my set as I thought it would be, you know, useful and relevant. Um, how I went about creating these images on the bones was I used a wood burner. I drew it out with pencil and then I went over it with the wood burner. So now these are elemental um, symbols that I thought would also be beneficial. Of course, these are not in the Norman, but you know, these are my own additions to my set. And that's one of the great things about bone casting is that you can make it very personal um, to suit your needs. So bone casting is a very earthy form of divination and no two sets are the same. Uh, they are very personal to the caster as you know, you acquire and accumulate and add and subtract, you know, bones from your personal set. It can enhance your intuition. 
And it's easy to see the physical relationships between the objects, you know, in regards to spacing and overlaying and how they interact with each other can give a more dynamic and different perspective than the use of tarot cards. It's just a different form of divination, a different type of message, but it's overall, you know, a great form of divination and yeah, I love it. There are many different things to cast your bones on. One of my favorites is this pelt. However, if you're uncomfortable with casting on a pelt, there are casting cloths specific for bone casting. Um, this particular casting cloth I got from a website, um, Tarot by Seven. On her website, she has several different bone casting cloths. Um, they are all each, you know, very unique and very beautiful. And this particular one is the one that I was drawn to. Um, it is very detailed. So each area, if the bone lands on it, you can get, you know, a different associated meaning, you know, a deeper understanding as to what is going on. And overall, it's, it's really lovely. I love working with this particular casting cloth. Now, in addition to having all these beautiful cloths that you could, you know, perhaps acquire, she has instructions on how to actually cast bones and create your own sets as well, which is really useful. So if you have, you know, if you're curious as to where to start, you know, that is definitely a good source of information. In her informational guide on casting bones, she does describe how to use an entire chicken for, you know, bone casting and divination. She gives the associated meanings which eat with each of the bones, which is pretty neat. I personally don't care for um, bird bones. Uh, I like um, mammal bones better. They seem to hold up a little bit more. They're a little bit more dense and more durable. That's just my personal experience. So once you've asked your question and cast your bones, the next step would be to interpret, you know, what the message is for your question. I cut out a little cheat sheet and just glued it to the inside of my little bone box. Um, that little cheat sheet came from Tarot by Sevens, you know, free information on bone casting. So it came in quite useful. If I'm not using a casting cloth, I like to use a rabbit pelt. The pelt itself gives a soft surface for the bones to land on. There's less bouncing around and less chance of me losing a piece, which is always good. Any pieces that fall off of the pelt are not included in the, in the reading. I remove all of the pieces that are not upright. So if they are face down, they are not a part of the reading and are removed. I read it from left to right, um, right being, you know, the future and left being the past. So, you know, past, present, and future. And I also read them in groups. So this particular set is one of my favorite. I was trying to construct a small set that was well balanced and that could provide a variety of responses. So each of the three bones has three different meanings, a positive, a neutral, and a negative. So, and also because, you know, there's actually a fourth side, that fourth side is left blank. So there's a possibility that that particular bone does not have any result, which is good because Sometimes no answer is an answer. My personal suggestion for bone casting would be to start with a Lenormand base or have a few key symbols. Use a casting cloth or pelt to establish borders. Write down your question and your outcome for later review, which might help understand future readings. Take time with your readings. Sometimes it takes a little bit for the message to be received and understood. 
you may have a flat reading and that's okay. You can always come back to it. Trust your intuition when you're casting bones. There's no hard set rules. One of the best parts of bone casting is that you can make it uniquely yours. So this is a very basic overview of bone casting. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. Bye.